Frankel, a horse that needs no introduction. From his scintillating race career to his illustrious career at stud, Frankel is the horse that defines a generation. After his daughter Anna Perna's win in the Epsom Oaks, Frankel was back in the headlines, and now Simon Mockridge tells us just what Frankel has achieved in his relatively short career at stud. When a horse like Frankel actually retires to stud at the end of the day, there is a very high expectation, in fact, an incredibly high expectation, far more than any other stallion that's probably ever gone to stud. Up until this stage, he had not had a classic winner in, in Europe, and it is fair to say there'd been a little bit of criticism along those lines. So Anna Perna winning the Oaks was a fantastic achievement. We were absolutely delighted. Uh, great training by um, uh, John Gosden. It was a brilliant ride, I think, by Frankie on the day. And the filly was tough and very genuine and ran on very strongly towards the line. So yeah, we're, we're, we're thrilled, we're thrilled. Well, to date, I think it's fair to say that, uh, you know, Soul Stirring was the start of it all in, in, in Japan. She was champion two-year-old and she was champion at three. She won the, uh, the equivalent of the Japanese Oaks. You know, he followed that up with Cracksman, who was a dual champion. He was high rated at 130. If you take into account that he's only got 383 foals of racing age, and from that already he's got 40 stakes winners. So, you know, we're talking about a percentage figure of about 13%. His first crop alone, he had 19 individual group winners from 111 foals, which uh, is a 22% uh, return. No stallion in history has done that. You know, it's a phenomenal achievement by a horse in a very short space of time. It's fair to say his, his own sire still sits above him, but he sits above him alone. There is no other stallion that is better than him. If you, if you look at since 2014 with his first crop, if you look at those statistics, he only sits second to Galileo. So, you know, I think that that in itself uh, shows you at what level he is actually operating. You know, he was the perfect racehorse. And you look at him as a physical specimen, you know, for a stud manager when he came to stud, his race record was one thing. But when he arrived at stud, his, it's his physical presence makeup which is so important. You know, breeders were able to come and look at him and say, you know, confirmation he's very difficult to fault. Uh, he's an imposing, uh, very masculine horse. Uh, he has the pedigree, he has everything. And then on top of that, his attributes, his main attributes is that he just seems to be very good at everything that he does. We have five active horses on the roster. Obviously, the likes of Oasis Dream, he's in the twilight of his career. He's, he's 19 this year, but he owes us absolutely nothing. You know, he's been a phenomenal servant to Jubmont over the years. Um, and we're very thankful to him and, and Dan Silly before because they actually established Jubmont as, as one of the preeminent uh, stallion farms in Europe. Then this has been subsequently backed up. We've got two young horses now at stud. Expert Eye has had his first year at stud. He's a very, very exciting horse. Obviously his win in the Breeders' Cup uh, was, was just nothing short of remarkable. He's been well supported this year. He's got 140 mares. So we're very pleased with what he's done. Uh, Bated Breath, well, for commercial breeders, I think you have to go a long way to find a better horse than, than Bated Breath. You know, uh, year on year on year, he returns remarkable stats. And then of course, there's Kingman. Now, everybody is talking about Kingman, Kingmania, King this, King that. He has done remarkably well. You know, to have had a classic winner with, with his first crop and actually with his first runner, we're delighted with the way that he's, he's done. 